Hi, I'm Steve Grady with Target Outcome, a GBC Strat Plan partner. I want to walk you through creating a new business plan. When you first open it up, you can see here that there's help throughout the product by clicking anytime on the question mark. So the first thing we do is fill out a little bit about our company. Here we show we're a large company. We're going to give the plan a name, GBC Strategic Plan, and we can add a logo that we'll use when we print the report later. Once that's in, you always move to the next page using the green arrow. Here you can see the top half of the Strat Plan dashboard. Again, opening up the window, you can see that the status bar at the top of the screen, the 1 through 5, shows where you're at. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and we'll add uh, some members of your team. Notice here also that each box has a blue slider that indicates it's going to be included and the red dot indicates it hasn't been done yet. So let's add in some team members here first. Fairly straightforward, you go ahead and type in the person's name. We're going to type in their title and or their nickname and we can upload a photo to make it easy to recognize folks. It kind of personalizes the product. After we do this, we can then, of course, add yet another team member. Here we're going to add a picture of Sam, add another team member. In this case, this is, whoop, got to retype it right here. This is Karen at her position, strategist. Add her nickname in as well and upload her photo. So we can start to add all the team members we need. This is going to be really useful later when we assign a tasks and accountabilities for the plan. So now we're going to go into our first area called vision. And all good strat plans have a solid vision for your company. And the cool thing about the tool here is we're going to go ahead and type in our first vision and the nice thing is we can add multiple visions so that we can decide with our team maybe which is the best. Now when you type in your vision, the tool then gives you the ability to um, see if it's a strong vision using the attributes and characteristics shown here. If it has those positive characteristics, you check that box and you can see that it'll then decide whether your vision is a weak vision or a strong vision. Once we go ahead and do that, we'll move to the next one. And here we're going to identify our mission statement. And you can see the tool gives you the uh, some options. For instance, they have Trader Joe's and Google's mission statements to give you some insights and inspiration in building your own mission. Once you type that in, there's a series of questions to determine whether this, again, is a weak or strong mission statement. Next, we go to values. And this is usually maybe anywhere from three to 10 values you want your company to stand for. Uh, these are the kinds of things that you're going to decide how to hire and fire by. They're going to drive how you interact with your customers, you're going to interact with your partners and suppliers. Uh, these are really key to get these down early in the process because that's going to reflect uh, later as you build out your tasks and actions and how you conduct business. Now we're on the next section here, and this is defining your company objectives. We're going to do this in four areas. The first category here are your financial objectives. So you type in your goal, then you type in how you're going to measure it, and then what is the target date for reaching that goal. And of course the calendar tool is here to give you a chance to uh, put in a specific date. It's always really good to choose specific dates, not a quarter, not a month, but an actual date. It makes it real and it gives it uh, some, some important context around urgency and getting it done by that date. Now you can add in multiple goals in each of the categories. Here we'll add a second financial objectives goal in. Again, we'll put the measure and when it's going to be done by. Let me choose the 30th. Next, we're going to done the customer objectives. And again, here, we're going to insert our customer satisfaction goals. We're going to go ahead and put in um, potentially some of our uh, ideal customer goals, what we hope to reach out if we maybe have some vertical market plans, the kinds of customers we want to reach. But again, they need to be measurable. 
So you need to have a key performance indicator and a value that you can put in for that goal and choose. Next, business process. What process objectives do you want to put in? We entered one as goal three there, you can see. And the last category here is talent and team. So every strategic strategic plan needs to have some uh, information around how you're going to build your team, how you're going to educate your team, what the objectives are to grow and improve your team. And then we can also add in custom objectives. If there's things that don't necessarily fit in these four categories, we can actually create our own objective category and add it here. So you can see that StratPlan is very flexible in the ability to add information in to customize your plan. Although there's an infrastructure to lead you through the process, there's a lot of flexibility here to be able to add things in and construct a plan that really suits your business very well. So now we've added in this custom goal. We come down here again and look at what are the strength of our company's objectives. Here's the criteria. And then specifically here you can see uh, we're applying the SMART. Is it specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based? And once we've identified that indeed our objectives are SMART, then we can go ahead and uh, click that and feel comfortable that uh, our goals and objectives can actually be accomplished. And here at this point, we're going to save the work we've done so far in step one. And we've completed that. And now we go back to the dashboard. And you see the four green dots there for each of the vision, mission, company values, and company objectives have all been completed. So the next section, we're going to assess what we can't control. And to remember where we're at, we're going to put the push pin on assessing our macro environment. And we'll pick up there in our next video.